it is well known that the gut microbiota is linked to a number of chronic liver diseases, such as alcoholic liver disease, and recently also data on fatty liver disease and fibrosis. And data from our group now show that the uh, microbiota has a key role in driving liver cancer development. We actually did two different studies. One was uh, giving mice a combination of four different antibiotics, and we saw a profound reduction of liver cancer development. And in a second study, we went in with a single antibiotic, which is a more feasible treatment in, in humans, and we still saw a reduction of uh, liver cancer development, albeit a little bit less. For current medical practices, there are no direct consequences, but it really puts the microbiota on the radar and on the screen as a possibility to prevent, potentially, liver cancer development. Because right now, we don't have any strategies to prevent this important disease. So there's a possibility that we could go in and change things in the gut microbiota, and that patients would, in the long run, potentially have less liver cancer. The key step right now is to translate uh, the data that we have had in mice to patients. I think that is what the field needs to focus on, and there's different possibilities. So I think one key step would be to employ treatments that are currently used in patients for, with chronic liver disease, but for other indications, such as the antibiotic rifaximin, uh, to think about designing studies to really test the hypothesis, which we have seen in mice, that treating patients with rifaximin may reduce the risk of liver cancer development. I think the message is that we, first of all, we need to understand the gut microbiota much better. Uh, I think the key message is that it's very complex and that it often may be context dependent. So in our presentation and our work, we've actually shown that antibiotics given for a specific disease may be beneficial. Uh, presentation from Dr. Blazer, for example, has shown that overuse of antibiotics may actually be causative in certain diseases. So it's, it's really complex. We have to think about disease-specific circumstances, and I think we still have a lot of questions and need to really do deeper analysis.